terminal is a fantastic and powerful tool that can be used just about in every aspect of our work. Now, it is actually a text-based access to the operating system and you can do a bunch of things with it, not only creating new files or directories, but also to configure and view your network connections and interfaces. So here is a list of some of the more useful commands that I use whenever I set up a home or an office network. So the very first command is ifconfig. ifconfig stands for interface configuration. It is quite a popular and known command and it will list all the available interfaces, either physical, virtual, ones that uh, comes with your Mac and ones that the operating system creates for different reasons. It will list them uh, one after the other and Apple has its own naming scheme. The first Ethernet interface is EN0, which in my case currently I'm using my Wi-Fi network to connect to the uh, internet. So we can see that I have a local IP address, which is the 10.0.3.139. That is my unique hardware address. That is my MAC address. We can see that the MTU, the size of the packets, is 1500 bytes, which is the default. We can also see uh, the broadcast address and we can also see the IPv6 uh, address. But the most important thing is the status. This interface is active. So we have said that we um, are connected to a wireless network. So let's use the airport command. The airport command to look and scan the environment, the wireless environment. That is one of those cool commands that are um, quite hidden in the terminal. So what we can see is the SSID, which is the name of the wireless networks around me. I'm currently connected to this network. We can also see the DSSID, which is the MAC address of that access point. RSSI is the Received Signal Strength Indicator, which is actually the signal amplitude as your MAC hears from your access point or from any other access point. Now, uh, a good measure is minus 65. We can see that currently I am at minus 67, which is okay, quite okay. Now, that's the channel, the wireless channel that I work on, which is number 64, which means that I'm actually working on a 5 gigahertz frequency. Uh, that's another high, throop, uh, high throughput parameter, which is yes, since my access point actually supports 802.11ac. That's the country code. We can see that we have access points uh, with the country code of US or Europe. That's the security. I'm working, um, my access point actually supports WPA2 pre-shared key with the encryption algorithm of AES. Currently it's AES 128 bit key. Another airport command is the one that allows me to look at my own SSID, the network that I'm connected to. I'm using it with the airport with the hyphen I. That's the name of my access point. That Those are the channels that I'm connected to, 64 and 80. Again, I'm using the five gigahertz frequency. I'm using uh, some bonded channels. That's the, um, that's the maximum rate. Uh, it's, it's more than one gigabit, theoretically, of course. The link authentication, as we said, I'm using WPA2 pre-shared key. That's the MAC address of the access point, which is uh, abbreviated BSSID. And the more interesting stuff that you need to know is the RSSI versus the noise, the noise level that uh, my MAC hears. Now, um, a good SNR, a good signal to noise ratio should be above 25. So currently I am having a 21 SNR, which is not that good. So it should be fixed. All right, now let's move to another network uh, command. 
let's use the IP config. Uh, no, let's use the netstat.nr. Netstat-nr. This command will actually show you your own Mac routing table. Now, what is a routing table? It is actually a set of rules that determines the um, the packets routes based on their destination. So we can see that um, on the left side, we can see the destination. It could be the default destination or the default route. And that's the next hope. That's the uh, path or the destination that the packet should travel to. Now, the first route is always the default route, which actually means that every packet that wants to get out uh, to the internet should head up to this gateway which is my ISP router. Another command, sometimes uh, we get our IP address from the DHCP server uh, but we want to create a momentarily static IP that is different from the IP address that we have gotten from the DHCP. So let's look at the IP address that we have now. EN0 10.0.139. And if you want to change it to a static IP, again, it's momentarily, so it will return back uh, as you reset your machine. To do so, we'll use the IP config set EN0, which is my wireless card. Now, in form, in uppercase, and the IP address that I wish to have. Let's use the 76. I need a permission since, since at, it, it, requ it requires a pseudo uh, permission. So let's use the pseudo command. Let's add up my password. And let's see again using IP config if I got the new IP address. EN0, yep. 10.0.3.76. Now, the next two commands are not related to networking. It is related to your own hard disk, your own disk. And for this one, I'm using the Disk Util. Now, Disk Utility is an app, a graphical user interface app that you can use on your Mac, but you can also use it on the terminal itself. So the first command is Disk Util list which will list all the available disks running internally or connected to your Mac. You can see the mount point of the disk. You can see the naming scheme. So disk zero is the main storage. But these ones are the partitions. So disk zero S1 and disk zero S2 are actually two partitions in my main storage. You can also see the virtual memory, virtual memory that your Mac reserves as a swap memory in cases that you will need it. Now it will change dynamically as you're using Apple's file system allows it to be dynamic since it uses space sharing. The other one, the other command that you can use within this util is the disk util verify v uppercase v volume and you can actually check out the internal disk on your drive 